Hey, Steve Basic Architect. Yeah, we're out here at our offsite build. Now, I've talked about this a bunch. I figured, you know, sometimes I do um, repetitive videos, but it's only because as time goes on, I think of different ways to explain the same thing and some things might register with you, some things might not. So we're gonna talk a little bit about wall assemblies again. Now, one of the interesting things I always find when I talk to builders, architects, you know, um, types in the industry, when they talk about wall systems, we're typically always referencing what I would call the center of cavity, right? So if I said this was an R21 wall or an R15 wall, I'm certainly not talking about what the R value is at the stud. I'm talking about what the R value is in the center of the wall. Right, so why is that somewhat problematic? Well, it's somewhat problematic because it's somewhat misleading, right? So if I look at this wall and I have an insulating sheathing on the outside, and this is a Zip R9, right? It has an inch and a half of poly ISO and then my board sheathing. So it's a two by six cavity, which would suggest an R21 blown in insulation here if we were doing blown in. So the R9, through the center of this, I have basically R30. So I would walk around saying, oh yeah, I got R30 walls in the house. But I really don't, because the reality is, is if I take this space, and I understand that the cavity space is only a small part of the wall. In a lot of part of the wall, I have what I call opaque framing. So I, here I have three inches, and inch and a half, inch and a half, three inches. So that takes up a certain portion of the wall. And then you can see I have window here and window there. So this isn't R30, this is whatever the R value of the window is. So if I took the whole envelope system and I said, okay, I'm gonna categorize it into three categories. So I say cavity, windows and doors, and opaque framing. And I take those three categories and I couple them all together. What I would come to realize is that my cavity space probably comes to somewhere between 64 and maybe 68% of the wall, right? So it's a, it's a good portion, but it's only, you know, two thirds of the way there. The opaque framing is probably somewhere in a 12 to maybe 16, 18% range. It depends because if we're doing a you know house on the ocean that is uh, you know a lot of glass, we're gonna have a whole lot of framing, not much cavity, but we might also have a lot of window, which is usually somewhere in that you know 18 to 21%. So the reality is is that each one of these carries a different value, right? So let's exclude the insulating sheathing for a minute. If we're just talking about center of cavity, I have R21 here. But at the stud, I have a little less than R6. It's like R5.8 or something like that. So we'll just call it R6. So I have R6 for that inch and a half and this three inches, R21 for this 23 and, or 22 and a half inches. But then over here, I have three feet where if it's a, a okay window, we're probably at R3. If it's a better performing, say European tilt and turn, this might be R7. But understand, R7, R21, right here, you have the cavity is three times as good as the window, right? And the fact that the opaque framing is down in that R6-ish range. So this is either equal to, or again, if it was a, a typical modest window, this would be roughly about twice the R value. What I'm getting at is the builder or architect that says, oh, we're doing an R21 wall. Well, you're not, because you're only doing an R21 wall for that 64-ish, 66% of the wall. Part of that wall might be as low as R3, and some of that wall is R6. So when I normalize those three categories across the whole building envelope of the house, I would come to understand what I'm calling R21 
is really probably something like R9 or R10 at best. If I bump this up to a European tilt turn, yeah, then I'm probably climbing into an R10 or an 11 range. Now, the beauty of using insulating sheathing is not only do I get the bump here at center of cavity where I go from 21 to 30, but at that 20% of opaque framing where I'm at R6, I just added R9, right? So for that inch and a half, it's no longer R6, it's R15, which is closing in on what that center of cavity was without the insulating sheathing, but it also takes our very best window and basically doubles it. So you can see the benefit of the insulating sheathing here in that not only is it helping out the cavity, but it's helping out the framing. So that bump in the R9, if we look at our three categories, it's now bumping that 66 plus that 15. So you're at 81, is that right? No, yeah, 81% of the wall system gained benefit from that zip R9 sheathing on the outside or insulating sheathing on the outside. The window, you know, it always remains the worst part of the wall. If I buy the very best window I can find, chances are it's still less of a performer than the cavity or equal to the opaque framing, but if I put that insulating sheathing on, right? So you, you think of the insulating sheathing, it's nothing more than basically putting a jacket and a hat on and just leaving your eyes, which in this case are the windows, open, right? Where you don't put anything over that. So that's the reasons for the benefit of the R sheathing. But that's a really quick explanation to help you understand the difference between, say, center of cavity, which a lot of people just write COC, um, as opposed to whole wall R value, where you actually understand the percentages of the other categories in the wall assembly, and then you normalize them against each other to get that whole wall R value. So anyways, quick little class on R value. I'm Steve Basic Architect. We're out here at our offsite build. Until next time, long live our buildings.